special guest. Yes. And you're going to want to have your full attention on our very special guest. Shout out to table one. Ooh -ooh. <laughs> so UNCF launched a, a national PSA campaign, Better Futures. Indeed, a college education ensures a brighter future for students like our featured student speaker, Jamal Rashid. <laughs> Just a little bit. Jamal is a business administration ma major at Morehouse College, a Dean's List student. Jamal is the recipient of multiple UNCF scholarships, including the Co America Foundation, the Foot Locker Foundation, and the William Wrigley Foundation. You a bad brother, aren't you? Yes, yes. Oh, yes, Jamal is deeply committed to community service and issues impacting African-American males. He has volunteered countless hours at the East Oakland Youth Development Center and with the Caper Center for Social Impact as a member of the Brotherhood Advisory Council. This is for you, Jamal. Jamal is an emerging young leader on campus and is in his community. I am pleased to introduce tonight's feature speaker, student speaker, and table one brotherhood, Jamal Rashid. Come on up, Jamal. United Negro College Fund, board and staff, friends and alumni, parents and students. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Jamal Rashid, and I attend Morehouse College as a junior business management major from Oakland, California. When I was first asked to be a speaker at tonight's gala, I was both honored and humbled. I'm excited to be here tonight because I sat in those seats four years ago as a senior at Bishop O'Dowd High School. Now, similar to most events at that time, I was only here because my mother told me I had to be here. I gotta, get, I gotta drop your entree off. But being no, here really right inspired me that night. There was a Morehouse student delivering this speech, and he had so much confidence and assurance. I thought to myself, it'd be nice to be up there someday. Yes. I never really thought it would happen, but I'm glad it did, yes. and I'm so very pleased to tell you all how I went from the waiting list to absolute excellence tonight. Looking back at my senior year in high school, I had a lot of fun, but there was also a lot of anxiety for me. All of my classmates knew where they were going for school, but I didn't. I had my eyes set on Morehouse, but I was on the dreadful waiting list. Eventually, I did get in, and during my freshman week, there was a Morehouse alum who spoke to all of the freshmen by the name of Calvin Mackey. Dr. Mackey is now a successful entrepreneur and motivational speaker. I remember him telling his story about how he was taking remedial courses and was on a five to six year plan to graduate. I sat in the audience and I laughed. For whatever reason, his story was hilarious to me. But as the school year progressed, the story became less and less funny because I realized I was in the same predicament as he was. I was on academic probation, put in remedial courses that didn't, didn't even count towards graduation. And when I took a look at a course catalog, I saw that I was on a five to six year plan to graduate as well. I thought to myself, they must think I'm stupid. <laughs> I took offense to that. Being on academic probation is like an NBA player who gets signed to a 10 day contract instead of the entire season. You see the team, they don't want to fully invest in this player because they're not quite sold on him yet. But in that player's eyes, he knows he's fully capable of doing damage the entire season. I thought to myself, how am I going to overcome this situation? When I first arrived in Morehouse, it was a little intimidating. Everybody walked around in suits. Everyone looked like they were about to run for president. <laughs> and I just arrived. But then I decided I deserve to be here. 
My route may be a little different, but I'll use it to my advantage and make things happen, just like I knew that I could. I felt more how some made a mistake, and the best way to get back at them was to make them believe it. I carried that chip on my shoulder the entire year. I carried that chip all the way to a 3.74 GPA. I showed them, and I showed myself too. I was proud, my mom was proud, my family, everybody was proud. As a matter of fact, I think I'll carry that chip all the way to graduate school and to the NBA where I hope to coach someday. Yeah. Now since I've been so blessed to live and I've worked hard, I couldn't have done it without my support system. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Yes. And I am definitely that child. I brought a big part of my village here with me tonight. And as I, and as I look into the audience tonight, I see a village that supports thousands of you through college. That village is called the United Negro College Fund. What? What? Every year I've applied for scholarships, and every year I received at least one. The UNCF has built a legacy that I and many others have truly benefited from. I know that it will continue to grow because of people like you. So in the words of my brother, Marshawn Lynch, who said, I'm thankful. <laughs> now since I've been so blessed in receiving all this help, I feel it's my duty to give it back, especially through mentoring. I know I have a lot of kids that look up to me, some who I mentor when I'm back home from break and over the phone when I'm at school. Oftentimes, they're my motivation. One of the most meaningful experiences I've had as a mentor was when I was the assistant director for the East Oakland Youth Development Center Summer Program. I'll tell you a story about Dale and Kobe. Dalen is in the seventh grade, and during last year's program, he had a book report due like the other kids in his group. The deadline was looming, and he was one of the few students who had not turned it in yet. Instead of coming at Dalen the wrong way or anything, I just decided to talk to him. He told me he read the book, but he didn't do the report because he did not think he was a good writer. Up to that point, Dalen was kind of seen as a jokester, and no one was really encouraging him as a writer. I sat down and talked to Dalen and told him that he could do anything, that he had a purpose before anyone had an opinion, and to always believe in himself. I like to think that those words did a lot for him. He turned in a great book report that summer, and I'm proud to say he now has a 3.8 GPA. Now I can think of plenty of stories of youth doubting themselves. I look back at some of my high school and middle school challenges and I see that they are their struggles as well. I've learned just as much from them as they learned from me. In Dalen's situation, I learned that things aren't always what they seem, and that just by giving your time to someone, you never know how far it can take them. I can recall a talk I had with my mother when I was feeling like I couldn't overcome a challenge in front of me. She told me, if you won't do it for yourself, do it for your family. And if you won't do it for your family, you gotta do it for all of those kids. If you give up or quit, they may not believe that they can overcome their challenges because they will not have witnessed anyone they know do. I think this is relevant for everyone in life, regardless of where you are or how old. You can't give up when life gives you a little bit of turbulence because there's someone out there who will see you quit and that may be the reason that they give up as well. Now, being an open kid, it can be a difficult transition going down to the south. <laughs> the weather, the food, the people, pretty much everything is different. Morehouse is known for developing leaders. And one of the best things I think a leader can do to develop himself is to take himself out of his comfort zone. I did that when I went to Morehouse, and I did it again when I applied for the Semester at Sea program. I was accepted, and I traveled to six different countries through the Caribbean, South and Central America. Being a broad truly shows you just how blessed you are when you see the circumstances of others. I ate some really good food, 
I saw some beautiful women. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> but I also learned something. I learned that our social problems are more alike than they are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what Morehouse is all about. Exposing yourself so you can develop and be a leader. Now this is Black History Month, and today is Valentine's Day. Love and struggle seem to go hand in hand. I know that there have been a lot of protests and candlelight vigils, movies like Selma, which emphasize our struggle. I've learned that we are strong, and most of all, we are worthy. I know this because of the people that have surrounded me. My family, my mentors, Dr. Wilson, the president of Morehouse College, all of my village. But perhaps the person I would like to quote in closing is another Morehouse alum, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King said, life's most urgent and persistent question is what are you doing for others? My response is, I'm working hard to make sure that Dalen, Kyle, Justice, my entire village knows that they can achieve their dream of getting to and through college. Thank you to UNCF for supporting mom.